students in the last three videos we have covered basically uh, some of the cases of conflict of interest wherein I explained to you the perceived conflict of interest in case of Rahul Dravid. I also explained to you the actual conflict of interest cases in case of uh, Rajat Gupta who was the former CEO of McKinsey and Company. I also explained to you the potential conflict of interest cases and uh, then we also uh, discussed how companies manage code of ethics in their companies, how they manage to keep their companies ethical, why it is good for the company to be ethical. We also discussed how conflict of interest is avoided and I explained to you the, uh, I gave you the examples from ExxonMobil and from Wipro. In this section, in today's video, we will talk about something which goes beyond ethics. It goes beyond ethics. Ethics, you know, is a very large subject. This is about corporate social responsibility. We will discuss the definition of corporate social responsibility. We will also discuss uh, the basic models of corporate social responsibilities, ethical, statist, liberal and stakeholders model. I will explain to you these models in details. I will explain to you what are the advantages of CSR. CSR is corporate social responsibility and why it is in the interest of corporate uh, corporates to embrace corporate social responsibility. I will also tell you the guiding principles of CSR law in India. As you know that we have a new law where it is mandatory in India, wide amendment in companies act to invest in CSR. We will uh, take the CSR funnel and uh, also 10 areas where CSR budget can be spent. Okay. And uh, what are the directives for the companies in respect of uh, CSR in uh, India? I hope you will uh, like these uh, explanations which I will give in the form of this video lecture. Let's uh, try to understand the definition of uh, corporate social responsibility. You know, there are many definitions which are available uh, in many blogs, in many websites. But to my mind, the best definition is what I saw uh, in the website of World Business Council for Sustainable Development. World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And I read from the website, it says CSR or corporate social responsibility is the continuing commitment, continuing commitment by whom? By business to behave ethically and contribute to economic development. While improving the quality of life of workforce and their families as well as local community and society at large. Now, <laughs> as I always explain, definitions by uh, noble organizations or by uh, highly qualified and educated people may appear to be uh, somewhat verbose to start with. But you split the definition into small parts and you will understand that uh, the concept is the their endeavor is to cover everything in the definition. So first of all, you have to understand in this definition that CSR is a continuing commitment. So CSR is not one shot activity. It is not that you have done something and then uh, you, you know you give it up. It is a continuing commitment. So this is one part continuing commitment by business. When I say by business it means by organizations. Okay. To what? To behave ethically. What is ethical behavior? Ethical behavior is based upon high moral principles, conforms to all, all the laws of the land and goes beyond equity, diversity, diversity, inclusiveness, fair treatment, no exploitation, profits but no profiteering, ethical, okay, no bribing, ethical. So, Commitment is by 
business commitment is continuous commitment to behave ethically and also to improve the qol now do you remember the concept of quality of life i had explained to you quality of life and quality of business life or of work life so in the quality of life i had told you that quality of life means favorableness on un or unfavorableness of the environment for a particular for, for a particular person they say how is your quality of life the quality of life in india in delhi is good the quality of life and it could depend upon so many factors environmental factors polit socio political factors freedom of expression freedom of speech so it's a continuing commitment by business to behave ethically and contribute to economic development while improving the qol of workforce workforce your workforce your fa workforce family because on family depends the workman's contribution to the company and final point is as well as local community and society at large okay so local community local community means if you have a factory if you have a factory people around you are your local community is that right people around you are your local community and society at large is a company big or small has some kind of impact positive negative it's never neutral if you are satisfying the need of your customer group you are giving a positive impact to the society so your contribution to the community local community which is around you around your office around your factory and society at large so for example yesterday we had uh, a peter drucker uh, series lecture where somebody from fuji films came and they said they have got ob vans which go and show movies educational movies to rural women to create awareness among breast cancer now what is the link between fuji film and a rural woman in india so this is a company which is socially alive which is alive to the welfare of the society so this is csr best definition of csr if you ask me uh, was given by mahatma gandhi he said wealth created from society is to be plowed back into society <laughs> simple he believed in the principle of trusteeship you are a businessman okay you are, you are let, let's take a simplistic example of a vegetable seller who is very rich he buys at a particular uh, price from the villagers he stores it in his area and then he retails it to the people who flock to a shop because he gives fresh vegetable and he sources them from the best source so he is making money from whom while it is uh, very clear that he has invested his time his capital his efforts in building the business and yet the money has come from society the ultimately the root of the money is society if you do the if you go back it must have come from his ancestors or or, or is it must be his parental money or it must be the money that he earned by way of interest or by his investment so it it has come from money it has come from society he is a product of society the road on which he drives his car belongs to society belongs to people the government belongs to the people he procures vegetable from the farmers people so how does he create his wealth from the society so after his own needs are met his family's needs are met he needs to plow it back to society this is the definition by mahatma gandhi who had this uncanny ability of simplifying very complex things another definition by uh, dr manmohan singh uh, which i really liked Manmohan Singh ji was the finance minister uh, of uh, Shri P. V. Narasimha Rao when the liberalisation 
the wings of liflation uh, were inserted into the Camutus body called Indian economics. He says CSR is no philanthropy. It is not a philanthropy. It's not like Dan or Kun. It is not charity. It is an investment in our collective future. Once again, Dr. Manmohan Singh says CSR is not, it's not philanthropy, it's not charity, it's an investment into our collective future. So what a business or what all the businesses put together in respect of CSR, so if they invest in colleges, if they invest in hospitals, if they invest in colleges, it helps in making a more educated India. If they invest in uh, in hospitals, it helps India become a healthier nation. If they invest in sports, it helps India become a stronger nation. If they invest in research and development, it helps India become a more self-reliant nation. Isn't it? And India, which is their market, if it improves, if it grows, then the future of the company also grows. Beautiful definition by Dr. Manmohan Singh. Then there is a stakeholder theory of CSR, which is also worth uh, having a look at. They say it is the manager's duty to balance stakeholders' financial interest against the interest of stakeholders, such as employees, customers and local community. I have The only objection I have to this definition is against. If I were... Uh, to rewrite this, I will say, instead of against, along with. So it is the manager's duty to balance the shareholder's financial interest along with the interest of other stakeholders, such as employees, customers and local community. Because if you start thinking that interest of the shareholder is on one side and the interest of other stakeholders such as employees, customers and local community is on the other side, then you will be making a mistake. Because whenever we think of versus this against this, then it becomes a case of conflict resolution. CSR should not be seen as a case of conflict resolution. Rather, it should be seen as an activity which is in the collective good of all okay so i have given you these four uh, concepts of csr we will discuss this further in the next slide the term uh, social responsibility was perhaps first coined in 1953 with the publication a book of a book by bowen actually the full name was howard r bowen and he was the president of uh, uh, Grinnell College, uh, Grinnell College uh, from I think uh, 1955 to 1964. He wrote a book which is considered to be the foundation of corporate social responsibility. It was called Social Responsibilities of Businessmen. By social responsibilities of businessmen, uh, Bowen meant the obligations of businessmen to pursue those policies, to make those decisions, or to follow those line of actions lines of actions that are desirable in terms of objectives and value of our society. So after this book was published and you know this book has got six editions now and uh, after this book was published uh, this concept of CSR uh, the it, it, uh, it started getting into vogue. But, you know, I want to say that the evolution of CSR is as old as trade and business for any corporation. See, in our Upanishads, it is mentioned that just like, just like a honey bee gathers nectar from a flower, but in the process does not kill that nectar, does not kill that flower. It is in the same manner that we must draw resources from the society and leave those resources for future generations. So I think in India especially the concept of corporate social responsibility is, uh, in, is very old. 
of course if you see uh, the mesopotamian uh, civilization it is mentioned that the king there he uh, he made death penalties for farmers or for or contractors if any of their actions resulted business actions resulted in death uh, in in loss to the people so you know these were coercive things but in the modern era the fa the phrase corporate social responsibilities we can safely say it was coined by uh, bowen's book social responsibility of businessmen by 80s and 90s csr uh, was taken into many discussions and the first company to implement csr was shell in 1998 and this i am quoting from corporate watch report 2006 in 1990 uh, csr was start uh, csr was a standard practice in industry with companies like price waterhouse and kpmg following it and talking about it so csr evolved beyond code of conduct and reporting eventually it started taking initiative in non governmental organization multi stakeholders uh, etc interestingly you know some people also view that an awakened and uh, educated civil society is a threat to corporate <laughs> and they believe csr is a solution for neutralizing such a threat let me explain let me take a hypothetical case of a of a village in which there is a village headman who is very rich he has got a water pond and he has got two tube wells and uh, then uh, there are the other villagers uh, around ab about 100 families who have just two tube wells and this uh, headman village headman has the highest he has the maximum resources in terms of the uh, in terms of uh, in terms of milk producing animals in terms of poultry in terms of agriculture so suppose this is a separate ecosystem this is a separate island so he is he must share this resource with others at least some of it otherwise suppose there is a drought or suppose uh, suppose there is no water available it didn't rain in a particular year so all these other people will become a threat to his existence so this is how some people try to explain csr that if you don't if corporates don't practice corporate social responsibilities their very existence will be threatened by the civil society which is awakened and which is educated i personally think that this is a very regressive view i think csr has to be looked from the perspective of a win win situation for the company for the employees uh, for example if a, if a company is doing badly if a company is doing poorly if a companies business model is not sustainable it is not able to give salaries to its people not able to meet the payment deadlines then to expect that company to be able to do some philanthropic work is uh, it's impossible it's impossible at the same time if uh, if there is vandalism if there is anarchy if there is a lack of rule of law and if people are there only to rob the rich people then that kind of a society cannot also flourish so there has to be a balance between the two there has to be a balance between business sustainability and what business should do for the society of course as gandhi ji talked about the principle of trusteeship he said the businessmen must think of uh, themselves as trustees of the assets of the society and they must distribute the fruits of their endeavors to the society uh, these are some some of the use but uh, csr in india now as you know as by an amendment in the companies act csr has become mandatory mandatory 2% of uh, annual uh, profits have to be ploughed back into csr activities i will explain uh, that in unit 4 but uh, much later much later so this point of csr i had wanted to explain to you because it has become very uh, it's a, it's a very pertinent point whether csr is something good whether csr is something bad or 
uh, it is in the interest of the organization or it is in the interest of the society unless it is interest of both the concept of csr is not tenable this is what i wanted to uh, say in this uh, discourse i am tempted to show you a pictorial diagram which i have picked from mckinsey and company mckinsey the big consulting management consulting company in the world and uh, of course mckinsey also gives consultation on corporate social responsibility so you have to see this chart from that perspective but if you see on the x on the x axis they have taken uh, the impact of corporate social responsibility on uh, the benefit to business and on the y axis they have taken the impact of uh, corporate social responsibility or csr as a benefit to the society the bottom most portion they are talking of pet projects by pet projects what they mean is some kind of a project which is the favorite of the business owner or the top executive so uh, this is basically driven or this is basically conceptualized because this is close to the heart of a person who is very important in the business so if that person may suppose there is a company which wants to uh, and the top executive of the company is very keen upon building a library so you know and this is something which is his, uh, which is his passion which is his calling and he starts to build a library so it, it has it has benefit to the business of course small benefit to the business because this activity is perceived as a philanthropic activity it has small benefit to the society why only small is because the community for which this project is being undertaken whether this is the one of the important projects that is needed in the life of that community or not so if i want to build a uh, in a highly digitalized world where most of the books are available free in some countries like you go you, all the books almost all books school books everything is available free in the digital library so there if you build a if you build a brick and mortar kind of a library will it benefit that society it's something to be uh, thought about or if you build a primary health center in a in a in a in a, in a township or in a small uh, colony where the disposable income is very high and people are, have money to go to the best specialist even if they are sneezing so building a primary health center there with just a medical doctor uh will it really benefit that community or society is doubtful it will benefit people so okay he's built a primary health center this is the mckinsey model i'm trying to explain and it is titled making the most of corporate social responsibility next they say the next level is uh, where the aim is benefit of society for the aim, for them the aim is a bit of philanthropy and uh, for the Uh, business the aim is to create some propaganda now this has more benefit and these kind of uh, csr projects they are slightly uh, they are they are well thought of and uh, but 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 uh, but what may happen what what may happen is that the benefit to the society may not be optimal because see these kind of uh, exercises are also are also undertaken by uh, by 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 the by, by the business to uh, usually usually they reflect the keenness to build a propaganda to build a propaganda around uh, the business so many would say many would suggest that this form of csr is at best a form of advertising and it could be potentially dangerous if it exposes a gap between the company's words and actions and for the society also uh, this may not be really something again which the society is needed so what what mckinsey suggests is that mckinsey suggests that first of all first and foremost 
the action should be uh, well thought of and it should neither be a pet project nor it should be a philanthropic project which may be seen as a propaganda but it should be seen as a partnering between the society and business so a business should identify identify the cause that is likely to benefit the society it must speak to the society it must be an interactive behavior with the society and after that business may not even directly participate it may even choose partners to implement that project for the benefit of the society this is partnering perhaps we can see also here is giving a small pitch for them as consultants to such projects i don't know but it, this is correct so when the corporate and the society they develop a partnership process and then and then they move forward for example uh in case of gujarat uh, uh cooperative of gujarat milk marketing federation which is amul they have partnership with the milkman and it is a cooperative wherein the farmers or the farmers who are also the uh, milk producers they own the cooperative they have a stake in the cooperative and then they realize that in those particular villages the immunization program the vaccine the basic vaccination program is lacking and if that village and the business acts together identifies that okay what we need to do is we have this kind of a budget and we want to make vaccination the primary vaccination to the children from the time of childbirth to up to up to say 7 or 8 years of age and the company sponsors such a project this is real partnership this is real partnering and this is what mckenzy says means by making the most of corporate social responsibilities i have personally i have personally like this model and uh, this model is not exploitative in the sense of it does not try to cash in uh, the goodwill from people just because a company has money to throw and it can do a charitable project it is also not a propaganda uh, activity because propaganda has a risk of being called a paid advertising and if there is a gap between what you promise and what is actually achieved then propaganda falls flat and it can cause lot of damage so a sense of partnering is uh, what i also feel is best in the benefit of the society and benefit of the business the benefit of the society is apparent so for example if uh, if the vaccination program is successful it will result in healthy children benefit to the business is uh, already there because the community will be grateful for the business for having sponsored such a plan sometimes a question is asked on corporate social responsibilities and it is asked that uh, uh, what are the various uh, what is the scope of corporate social responsibilities so uh, i have tried i have attempted to answer this i have given you 6 7 points see first of all csr is an attempt it's an attempt made by companies to be voluntarily voluntarily responsible not coercively responsible to be voluntarily responsible to ethical and social consideration this i want to say is that the urge to be ethically and socially responsible comes from within the company it should if it is coerced upon if it is seen as uh, as 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 uh, getting driven from somewhere it may not exactly qualify as a csr it may not be a legal binding for the company unlike corporate accountability you know a corporate accountability makes you makes you adhere to some legal or uh, accounting norms and csr may not be legally binding although i must tell you that india it has become legally binding it is mandatory under the law for some companies who make uh, who, who have a revenue or a 
net profit of uh, such and such crore i will explain that to you further but you know by and large there are companies there are many companies who are not at their threshold level even they get into csr activity they get into the csr activity not because it is legally binding again so it is a set of obligations which a company has decided it wants to pursue these policies it wants to take those decisions it want to follow those lines of action which it thinks is desirable and the set of obligation and an organization has to pro project it already decides so csr is a deliberate exercise it says this is the path we will take this is the image we want to project this is the image we want to enhance we want to otherwise work for the betterment of the society in such and such function and it defines a kind of a overall relationship of the corporate with all its stakeholders what do you mean by stakeholders stakeholders means first customers your employees the community around you also owners and investors bankers government suppliers competitors and the element these are stakeholders and the element of social responsibility should include how much you will invest in the community outreach what is meant by outreach outreach means the extent of your reach so what is the what is your community outreach is your csr limited only to the families of the employees or just to the uh, people who come in contact with the company or with customers or beyond that okay it also uh, takes into account the employee relation creation and maintenance of employment environment uh, leadership and of course financial performance so these are five i will tell you couple more or a couple of uh, more important elements of corporate social responsibility professor ac fernando in his book business ethics and corporate governance and i have taken it from page 232 pearson india kindle edition he says he has given a good uh, equation i have like this equation he says total corporate social responsibility is equal to economic responsibility plus legal responsibility plus ethical responsibility plus philanthropic responsibility so what is economic responsibility you have a responsibility to have a sustainable business model you must have economic activities which can provide return to the shareholders you can pay taxes on time you you have to pay suppliers on time you are able to pay fair balanced good wages to your employees you are able to this is economic responsibility and you are able to create value in the value chain so this is economic responsibility legal responsibility is towards the uh, legal ecosystem of the country so if you are if you are required to have internal complaint committee icc for uh, prevention of sexual harassment then you need to have that icc if your number is if the number of employees more than 10 if you have to uh, give provident fund to your employees and you have to enroll yourself with the provident fund agencies then you need to do so if you have to uh, enroll your company with essential uh, with 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 esi employee state insurance uh, act you must be able to do if you need to provide fixed working hours and if you are working in shifts and your shift cannot be more than 8 hours then you need to follow that responsibility if you are pay, if you are calling workers beyond 48 hours of work in a week and you need to pay them uh, double the wages for every hour worked beyond 48 hours then you need to uh, this is your legal responsibility to ensure that happens then ethical responsibility your ethical responsibility towards ensuring uh, uh, gender equality towards being an equal opportunity employee okay and uh, towards uh, you being you you are showing integrity honesty and fairness in your conduct at all times this is your ethical responsibilities Phil philanthropic responsibilities philanthropic responsibilities what you are not asked or you are not bound by the government to do but you do it 
out of your own principled belief that if you do something good for the society, you are doing it as a duty. You are not doing it because of coercion. And seventh point is that social responsibility of business is temporal and society based. It can change. It can differ from society to society and it can change over time. So I thought I should give you the six, seven features of corporate social responsibilities also from the examination perspective. And I'm sure that you will be able to answer the questions if, uh, if a question on these is asked to you. Uh, in this uh, part of the presentation, we will talk about the four models of CSR and the four models of CSR are first is ethical model, second is statist, statist model, third is liberal model and fourth is stakeholder model. And the credit for this uh, classification as far as my learning is concerned goes to once again Professor A.C. Fernando and I have taken it from the Kindle edition of the book Business Ethics and Corporate Governance, Pearson India. Let me explain to you a bit about the ethical model. Ethical model generally believes in voluntary commitment by companies to public welfare. Mahatma Gandhi's model. The proponent ya praneta is Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi as you know is the father of nation for India and he was a freedom fighter, born in a Gujarati family. He studied law in England and he practiced law in South Africa and he returned to India and he started when he was in South Africa, he fought against the racial discrimination between whites and non-whites. And when he came back to India, he joined Indian National Congress and he was the most prominent leader. And his non-violent methods are often, often given the credit for his ability to mass mobilize uh, people against the British Raj and he was the principal architect of freedom of India. So, but he left his, he, he, he made his impact not only in the freedom struggle, but also as a champion of uh, casteless society and he fought against the social evils and he had his clear, explicit, unambiguous opinion about almost everything in life uh, from, uh, from health to hygiene to prayer to religion to philosophy and also business. He believed in the trusteeship principle. He believed that people are trustees that industries are, they are the trustees of the wealth of the society. In this model, there is voluntary commitment to public welfare. It can also be tracked back to the pioneering effort of 19th century corporate philanthropists such as the Cadbury Brothers in England. In India, it has its roots in the Gandhian philosophy of trusteeship. For example, this model are found in Tata's, Birla's, Infosys, Dr. Reddy's lab, Reliance Industries. All these companies have provided cash for social welfare projects, community investment trust and schools. Many companies, many companies, particularly family run businesses, they continue to engage in philanthropic activities based on this model. So in this model, uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, say, said that we are the trustees, everything belongs to the society including our own lives are meant and God has chosen us to be the trustee of the wealth and the assets and we need to use it for the betterment of the society. So you would see that uh, Tatas uh, who built many temples and very many inns, dharamshala for the people who were on pilgrimage, uh, Birlas I mean, Birlas built it. Tatas uh, built a lot of schools and colleges and educational institutes as also hospitals and also they invested in uh, their money into fundamental research. They built uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Infosys has this great, great uh, philanthropic activities which are ongoing. Reliance Industries, Wipro 
founder also does lots of philo philanthropic activities lot of actors big actors do lot of philanthropic activities so this is a ethical model basically this is a ethical model the uh, on the face of it this is a very very noble uh, model but you know it will also the success of this model will also depend upon the uh, sincerity the sense of humility and humanness in the owner of the business and you know often times this this will also be influenced by uh, what drives you in life if it is service which drives you in life you will tend to do philanthropic activity if it is the growth that you want to become the number one industrialist uh, you know you will be driven by that factor so the but anyway this is the model the second model is the statist model which is you know uh, this in this model state owns everything public sector units are there and this was practiced in india by jawaharlal nehru pandit jawaharlal nehru as you know was the prime minister of india from 1947 to 1964 and uh, he was one of the most popular leaders of indian national congress and what you find today iims iits all india institute of medical sciences bhakra nangal dam project steel authority india limited bharat electronics limited many most of the public sector units you will find that they came up during the nehruvian time he believed in state ownership of all assets and he believed in the legal requirement of corporate social responsibility he he believed that public sectors must provide housing and school to the workers and the inspiration was drawn by labor laws and management principles but you know uh, this model this model is now being challenged by the trend of disinvestment and privatization statist model once again it's a it's different from ethical model because in ethical model uh, the assets are owned by private individuals and they voluntarily act as trustees in statist in statist model the government does not believe that private individuals are capable of doing much for the society and that it is for the government to take charge of all the resources and to do all the csr that is involved now of course if everything is under public sector and in case of public sector the problem is of efficiency the problem is of of commitment because often time if one does not have his own skin in the game one is not very productive or one is not very innovative or one is not very brilliant so if the public sector themselves will be uh, not very progressive in terms of productivity then public sector itself will not be able to generate sufficient revenues and uh, sufficient earnings to do any sustained corporate social responsibility it has been seen that mostly the public sectors in india have over the years failed i am not trying to decry the uh, the importance of public sector what public sector achieved in india is phenomenal but if you see today state bank of india and if you see hdfc bank you see that the hdfc bank's market valuation is several several times more than the valuation of state bank of india you see the service level at uh, in a private airlines and the service level in a state uh, run public sector airlines there is a c difference there is a vast difference and that's why you see any other enterprise you can uh, you, you can take you, you you can take take the case of refineries private sector refinery and public sector refinery the refining the the gross margins per uh, per barrel in case of private sector refinery is very very high so if you have high margins so then that means you have more disposable income which can be utilized in uh, for the greater cause of uh, of the society so statistist model and ethical model i have explained to you third is liberal model <coughs> liberal
liberal model the proponent was wilton uh, milton uh, friedman or wilton milton friedman and uh, uh, milton friedman have, he got a nobel prize for economics it is called nehru uh, nobel memorial prize in economic sciences and uh, he was an american economist who was born in 1912 and he passed away in uh, 2006 and uh, he 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 was uh, one of the most influential person who believed in very uh, very little interference from the uh, government he extolled the virtue of free market economics with minimal intervention he once uh, stated that his role in eliminating uh, conscription in the united states was his proudest accomplishment so you know he he advocated policies like volunteer military services freely floating exchange rates he even opposed the war on drugs see so this gentleman milton friedman said that corporate responsibility is limited to private owners shareholders so everything should be free he eventually he also postulated that ultimately if csr corporate social responsibilities will be seen as a medium which can enhance image corporates will voluntarily 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 get into get into uh, corporate social responsibilities the fourth so this is liberal so we have discussed ethical statist liberal and fourth is the stakeholder model of uh, csr in this the company responds to the need of its stakeholders whether it is customer creditors employees community etc and this has been the proponent is r edward freeman uh, r edward freeman once again is a american philosopher and uh, he 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 was born in 1951 so a young man and he was the professor of business administration at darden school of uh, university of virginia and his pioneering work is the stakeholder theory uh, on business on business ethics so what is the stakeholder theory the stakeholder theory is a theory of organizational management and business ethics which accounts for multiple constituencies impacted by business entities like employees suppliers local communities creditors and others and this addresses morals and values in managing an organization such as those related to csr market economy and other social theories the stakeholder view of strategy integrates resource based view and a market based view and it adds a socio political level one common version of stakeholders theory it seeks to define the specific stakeholders of a company and then it says that the company stakeholders are not they are not limited to the owners they are not limited to the uh, customers and they are not limited to the employees but it goes beyond that so stakeholder theory is the most popular current theory which also explains that why it is in the interest of business to take proactive role in discharging corporate social responsibilities